you have fully vacant units on your property that you have mothballed until next semester? If you do, I bet you've thought to yourself, we should list those on Airbnb for game day weekends or for parents visiting their kids. Maybe you're in a college town like Austin or Raleigh or Tallahassee, and your city has large festivals and not enough hotel rooms. You know you could lease those units on a nightly or a weekly basis. Providing short-term rentals on platforms like Airbnb can provide a great source of ancillary income. But it takes some, uh, all right, excuse me, it takes a lot of organization. There's the additional setup of providing linens and coffee makers and all the little things that a short-term tenant will expect. Then there's the regulatory and tax issues that could require additional work. More importantly, there's the time and labor to market on all the multiple platforms, handle the reservations and cancellations, the cleaning, and then there's the bookkeeping. All of this turns into a big distraction from the main job at hand, which is operating and leasing your property. That's where Vector Travel comes in. These guys know the short-term rental industry and they know how to relieve all of those burdens from the property manager. And best of all, they've become experts in how to do that with student properties. They understand the complexity of mixing travelers with college students. They know it so well, they can quickly identify if a student property is not going to be a good fit for their program. So if you have vacant units, reach out to Vector Travel and have them do a free, no obligation assessment to determine if enrolling your vacant units in their program will be beneficial. Go to VectorStays.com forward slash SHI. Fill out a quick form to receive more information. You will also get the first month service fee waived by going to that specific landing page. Again, that's VectorStays.com forward slash SHI. Welcome to the Student Housing Insight Podcast, where we are putting you in touch with the people who bring student housing to life. I'm your host, Wesley Dees. Well, guys, thanks so much for for tuning into this podcast. Uh, We're actually going to do something kind of um, special this week. We've got uh, two episodes that we're posting, and the reason I'm posting both of them this week is because it's April already. And if you haven't been a part of our weekly memo session, uh, which is a weekly webinar that we do uh, for the for the entire industry, but but really geared towards on-site and regional level, corporate support level positions. If you haven't been tuning into that each week, you've missed some incredible content the past two and a half months when we started this in in February. And so there were a couple of things that came out. uh, One that we talked about in February, which we're going to be talking about in this episode. And then also uh, just this, this past week, as it relates to uh, finishing out the spring semester strong with leasing. And so uh, like a lot of the other content from Memo, we've been publishing it through the podcast about a month after Memo. But this one, we, you know, we wanted to get it out uh, to, to the entire SHI audience uh, just so you can capitalize on some of the things that were said in that one on leasing. So that will be a separate episode, but we're going to post it at the same time. In this episode, we're actually going to be talking about term because I'm sure as you've been getting closer and closer to the end of the semester, uh, you've gone through that RFP process, you are uh, ordered your furniture, you're doing all of those things that you've got to, that you got to put the the checks in the boxes for uh, as it relates to getting ready for for this summer. Turn is has really evolved over uh, certainly over my career in student housing, which is now over twenty years, and uh, and it's really evolved over the past I would say two years um, with some with some technology and just kind of a thought process as we you know if you look at the top twenty five operators in the in the U S right now. Their portfolios are bigger and bigger and bigger than they have ever been in the past. It's, you know, I think the first time uh, I remember uh, a company I was involved with that was in the top 25, you know, we were like in the top 10 at 14,000 beds. You now have to have 10,000 beds just to even break into the top 25. 
So, so a lot's changed with that. A lot has required operators to think about turn a little bit differently and how you manage it, uh, how you prepare for it, and, and certainly how you execute on it. And so, so we talked about that back in, in February with two great folks with new companies that are, are supporting the industry. Both of these guys have a background in, in student housing, and so they understand the operation side. And now their new companies are really focused on uh, really kind of fine tuning everything with, with the processes. Uh, one is Matt Windsor with the term company, which is a company that Cardinal Group Management actually spun off, I guess is the best way of, of, of putting that. Matt Windsor was a portfolio director for them. And uh, I think the idea was being kicked around of, hey, we've got to improve the term process. How can we do it? And they created a company that is not only working on their portfolio, but they're actually expanding it to the entire industry. And, and there's some key concepts of what they're doing that I think are, are really cool that we all need to be thinking about. And then the other one is, of course, no stranger to this podcast. He's our co-host, Lincoln Ogata, and is also the co-founder of Easy Turn, which is making everything easy when it comes to, to task management overall on your property. But it it is really about the turn process and everything involved with uh, with managing the task around turn just happens to be that that works out for a lot of things like light inspections and building inspections and regional manager check-in inspections. <laughs> and, and so they have expanded quite a bit as well. But let's go ahead and, and get over to, to that episode. I want to share that with you guys. And we're just going to end this one with, with our, our music at the end. I don't really have anything to, to add to, to what they uh, have have stated, but I also want to give you the opportunity to go ahead and start playing our, our next episode uh, regarding springtime leasing and transitioning over to summer leasing. All right, guys, take care and enjoy this episode. Well, welcome everybody to this next session of our memo web series here at Student House and Insight. Today we're talking about turn. And yes, I know it's only February and we're talking about turn, but it's never too early. And quite honestly, if you're a student housing professional and you're successful at being a student housing professional, you were probably talking about turn on move-in day of 2020. <laughs> so, uh, but specifically, we're going to be talking about some new approaches to turn as well as some new technology uh, that's being utilized in the industry. So joining me today is Matt Windsor, Director of Operations at The Turn Company, which is based in Denver. Uh, the Turn Company is headed towards what their ultimate goal is, um, I guess is the best way of saying it, is to be able to completely take off the turn process from your on-site staff. So looking forward to talking to them about where they're at in that process. And then also joining us today is, is someone who's no stranger to Student Housing Insight. Uh, we've got Lincoln Ogata, who's one of our co-hosts. He's also the co-founder and vice president at Easy Turn, which is an application, a piece of technology. I don't know exactly how you define it these days that basically eliminates the turn board, um, regardless if you're still using a paper turn board, God forbid, or if you're using an Excel turn board, you've seen nothing until you've seen Easy Turn and, and how much easier that makes life with, with turn. So guys, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having us. Yeah. So before we get into turn, I think it's really important that our folks kind of get an understanding of, of who you guys are and your background, because it's not like you're an outsider coming into this and saying, oh, there's a better way of doing this. You guys have, have had a lot of experience rolling your sleeves up, being on the ground and and figuring turn out from, from that level. So if we will, let's just kind of let's talk about your background prior to starting the companies you're with now. Matt, we'll start with you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, thanks so much for having me on, Wes. Um, I've really been looking forward to this. I'm excited. This is my first ever uh, podcast appearance. So uh, uh, thanks a lot for, uh, for bringing us on. But uh, 
we, we launched the Turing Company in January 2020, but before that, I had been working with Cardinal Group Management since um, uh, 2015 in several different roles. I started out as an area manager. I worked as a portfolio manager. Uh, I was a group operations manager, and for about two years, I was uh, also national facilities manager. Uh, before that, uh, before Cardinal, I worked with, um, I started out with GMH in 2005. I did my first turn in 2005 with them. Uh, and then, you know, the ACC uh, acquisition in 2008 uh, occurred and I stayed on with ACC, worked for them for about three years. I took a couple of years off to go to uh, graduate school and get my master's degree in business. And then I came back and uh, jumped on with Campus Advantage. And um, then Cardinal picked me up in, in 2015. So I've been doing a Nothing but student housing uh, for uh, going on sixteen years. Awesome, Lincoln. How about how about you guys specifically? Yeah. You, sure, yeah, sure. So uh, I actually uh, originally was in was in the Navy. Not originally in, in my adulthood, obviously, but I started off in the Navy uh, with the Construction Corps, and uh, that's kind of how I got my my construction background, Civil Engineer Corps, called the CBs. Uh, that's where I started off. I did five years active duty, and then another five reserve. When I got out of active duty, I came back and. Uh, found myself, as I always say, uh, just kind of people just kind of end up in student housing. So I was at student housing. I was a facilities manager off the bat and was really kind of excited because I got to keep up the intensity of the Navy and the military life in, in a job as a civilian. So obviously people think that you have to be a little bit crazy to, to stay in, <laughs> uh, maybe not to get in, but to stay in student housing. But I, I really enjoyed it. Kind of an adrenaline junkie there and no better adrenaline than turn. So Literally two months into my very first student housing job, I was running a turn, and that was 12 years ago, and I've, I've been doing them nonstop in one capacity or another since. I, I spent time with Campus Apartments, Campus Advantage, and then the EDR project at UK, which is really where I gathered enough frustration and insanity to want to create something like Easy Turn. So running 6,700 bed property there with you know 100 plus people moving parts. Uh, during turn. So I always say our product was built out of frustration and that is my location that gave me my frustration. So. And, and UK being university of Kentucky, you're, you're based in Lexington Correct. and uh, yeah, you had what? 6,500, 6,700 beds. 700 beds. Yeah. Yeah. In phases, incredible. But still it was a lot. Yeah. Well, Matt, I want to I want to talk with you first a little bit more about the Turn Company. You know, uh, you guys are essentially becoming kind of the, the outsourced go to for property managers and, and properties to to you know take their turn to. And you know, I think I think everybody that's had a successful turn, you know, especially if they've been in the property manager seat or the general manager seat, have had a successful turn and they say, you know what, I could probably do this for all the properties in my market. I know I certainly had you know, that, that thought come across after, I don't know, probably my second or third turn of, you know, maybe there's a business model here. The, the problem is it only happens one time a year, right? And so you start looking at the cash flow in that business model and it's like, yeah, that's probably not worth taking the risk. But you guys are doing that. And, and you know, this is, Last year was the first year that you guys went through this as a as a company, and it was pretty successful from from what I'm hearing. You know, if I'm a if I'm a property manager right now, and and I'm you know watching this session, I'm kind of thinking, you know, why would I want to to outsource this to to another company? You know, this turn is such of an integral part of not only the p l of a property but everything that kind of i would even say it's probably one of the big reasons the teams the site level teams you know on site are are so strong because they've they've gone through that fire together right <laughs> and so i think uh you know i think a, a lot of people probably just kind of struggle a little bit getting their head around what that would actually look like can you walk us through that a little bit yeah, yeah. Uh, the the, fir the first thing I'll say is, you know, we don't come in and and take over anyone's turn. Uh, a lot a lot of people have got a really good process in place, and we don't want to, you know, we actually thought a lot about that when we were forming the company. That at the end of the day, the community manager and the you know the regional managers they're responsible for how their 
their turns go. So we don't want to come in and disrupt a, a healthy turn plan. But what we do is we take on the vendor management side of turn. So sourcing bids, negotiating the rates, signing contracts, scheduling, execution, invoicing, the audits and lien waivers, that process start to finish. Uh, we take it on. We take on the, the whole the whole shebang with that. Um, for now, we're only doing this for the core turn trades, painting, cleaning, and carpet cleaning. Um, we are we are you know as you mentioned earlier, we do want to expand those out and take on more and more of those you know th- those different stages of your turn along your turn board uh, and, and fit them more in. We feel like the more pieces of that puzzle that we can we can take on, the smoother all of the other pieces will go. But as you mentioned, it is only February. We have already begun working on this year's turns and meeting with the on-site teams from the turns that we did last year. So uh, we start planning, you know, we start this whole process very early and we actually work on turn year round. So if we're brought in uh, to, to work on a, a community's it's, turn. It's really become, I was just going to say, and agree with you. Yeah, it's it's become a year long process, uh, right? And as you see, more and more student housing communities that have been built over the past, you know, especially over the past decade, but I would even say over the past two decades, um, these markets have kind of become really saturated with these prop with these type of properties, and all of this work is going on. You know, I th- think of you know a campus like. Clemson, right? The closest thing is 30 minutes away, 45 minutes away in, in Greenville, South Carolina. You know, your next biggest city is probably, uh, you know, Augusta or somewhere around the northern side of Atlanta. And that's where you've got to pull all, all your trades from because you've used up everybody in Clemson, <laughs> you know, if, if you've got a property right. there. So right. it is, it's one of those things. You got to start putting out RFPs in the fall now. And, and I remember, remember when I was on site, that was, that was something that you wanted to make sure you had done in, in April or May. And now it's something that we're doing way much earlier. But anyway, go ahead. Oh, no, no. Um, yeah, I was just uh, yeah, that, that's been our that's been one of our biggest pushes is uh, trying to get this trying to get this process, trying to get, uh, you know, everybody involved in it to start thinking about it a lot sooner. You know, it, it's very easy to flip the switch off when it's over because that's that's it feels good to do that. But uh, we're just going to keep the and then, and you know, switch it off when it's done, switch it back on in April and May. Uh, but we're just going to keep it on uh, year round and keep working on it. And just, uh, you know, the way we're approaching it, uh, we're working with vendors all over the country, working with communities all over the country. And when we're looking to do, you know, possibly 40 turns, um, we're planning every single uh, step of each one of those out. And so it it, it takes a, a bit of a longer time to put all the pieces in place, make sure everybody's turns go really well. And it also gets us, you know, working with the on-site teams a lot earlier, learning their communities inside and out. You know, once we once we get a turn under your belt at a community, uh, we're, I don't know that we're experts on it, but once we have one uh, in the bag, we can approach it. We've got so much more uh, information and detail and uh, context that we can that we can uh, improve upon uh, for for the turn for the next year. I, I'm I'm glad you made that that last that last point because you know I've got to tell you there, there's there's a part of me that's just like no way would I ever just give over turn to uh, you know to a, a company that is going to take care of finding the vendors, take care of getting the pricing within budget, take care of scheduling. Uh, everybody. And then there's another part of me that, that thinks about a a lot of the things that you just said in that, in that last sentence or two that I'm like, this is the way it has to be done. Especially if you've got, you know, a growing portfolio, I can imagine that being the case. And, And here's why turn happens one time a year. Yeah. We've got little turns in December and March, but summer turn only happens one time a year. And, uh, you know, because of that, you don't get to make a lot of mistakes. And right. the other thing, and this has been, you know, just a big, uh, and you and I have talked about this before, it's been a big complaint of mine. Over the past two decades, we've experienced a lot of growth in this industry. And because of that, it's been very hard to retain 
site managers at the at the site level for any extended period of time. And I know uh, us on this call, I guess we're kind of the old school guys now, but and we've had this conversation that it really takes, you know, three or four turns, preferably at a single property before you can really understand you know, what happens in one turn, how that impacts what's going to happen the next turn, or maybe even two years down the road. And without understanding that, you really don't know how to, you know, become a turn ninja, as, as I like to say. Uh, so, yeah. and, and, you know, let's, let's be honest, there are very few managers, and I mean very few managers that end up staying at a single property for, you know, more than two or three years. They're out there. Um, I'll tell you, they're really good ones. They're not staying at that property because, you know, there's not advancement for them to move or anything like that. It's because uh, they don't want to pick their family up and, and move somewhere for a corporate position or, you know, be traveling all the time. And, you know, kudos to those managers because, I can really tell a difference in, in the strength of those type of managers that, you know, because of the season of life that they're in or, or whatever, they're committed to being at that property. And and it, the, the end product, especially at the end of turn on move-in day, you can tell it. I really, I really say all that to say, you know, that, that what you guys are doing is probably going to be a necessary way of doing turn. And I know that's kind of a blanket statement, right? But we need consistency in order for, for turn to be successful. And I think what, you know, you just hit on being able to have one group, um, being able to have turn vendors national and regionally that you're able to work with year over year, I think goes a long way into, you know, making things more efficient as well. I don't even know if that was something you guys were thinking about when, when you started the company as far as the turnover rate that happens. Because if, if they're not being promoted within two years, they're, they're burning out and leaving as far as the folks at that general manager or community manager level. But you know, what other problems are, are you guys solving with this approach? Yeah, right. Uh, no, uh, the consistency. I mean, that was a uh, that was that was a fundamental uh, consideration when we were discussing what problems we were trying to solve with uh, with starting this company. You know, with the rate of turnover in student housing management positions and the the inherent result of each manager wanting to do turn their own way. You know, how can we create consistency in this process? And, and same with the vendors, you know, a turn, you know, the best turn is going to be when you've got a manager who's been there for three to four years and a vendor who's been doing that turn for three to four years. And, uh, and for those pieces to kind of line up, uh, they, they just don't, it's just, you know, it's not always going to happen. And there's a lot of risk with that. You know, there's a lot of risk involved with turn from, you know, uh, if, if your move-in day doesn't go well, you know, and, and that's that's happened quite a bit, as we know, in this industry, you know, what is the impact for your brand and what is the impact, you know, for your online reputation and your ORA scores and, you know, your your resident retention, your your new leasing, um, all of those all of those factors that go into having a great move in day and um, the, the risk that that comes along with that uh, when you don't have a, a standardized, consistent process uh, that, that you can replicate year over year over year. And, you know, we're starting with the vendors. Uh, you know, that's like where the rubber meets the road uh, to begin instilling that consistency for all the turns that we do. And the, the other big piece of that is the data uh, that we collect in order to create true year over year comparisons for our turns. Uh, that's one thing that when we started digging in and looking into how many you know, beds and common areas and change orders as a community doing year over year over year. Uh, we didn't find anywhere where that data was being tracked or housed. So um, we, we started with the vendors. And uh, the other big part is, the, is that data part that we just felt was missing. So we can create a true turn record for each uh, community that, that we work with. Yeah, no, I think that's, I think that's key. And for, you know, the operators that are out there now, you know, I, 
I went through a process when, you know, I was that COO, you know, of a national portfolio that was, that was growing. Uh, you know, I went through a period of, and I took a lot of pride in teaching managers how to, how to go through the new managers, especially how to go through turn and regionals on how, you know, how to manage the process across all of their properties so that, you know, they're getting good information. And, uh, you know, if I, and, and I'm amazed at the number of operators, large operators that, you know, are, are not doing that. They're just kind of saying, hey, here are the key things and here are some suggestions. Now go figure it out. <laughs> and again, you'd be shocked to actually know which companies those are. But and so, you know, what I what I like about this is I think we're going to be able to start to get some some real key information and insight into where we're wasting dollars at. So so kudos to, to you guys and looking forward to, to hearing more about, you know, what you guys are doing this year. Now, before I leave, I do want to transition over to the technology part and talk with Lincoln a little bit. You guys will also do kind of one-off project management stuff as well, correct? Yes, we do. Uh, we do um, we do uh, lighting projects, uh, hallway paint uh, projects. We've got a couple of those coming up. Some HVAC conversions, you know, the R22 to 410 uh, some roofing projects. So uh, in addition to the, the summer turns, uh, we do in, any uh, capital project that an on-site team is going to have to go out and, and get bids for. And then in a lot of cases, you know, the, the uh, manager on site is expected to project manage uh, that, you know, that, that capital project from start to finish. Uh, we take that on. We we take on that whole process. So uh, yeah, we've been we've been doing quite a bit of the uh, quite a bit of those have been have been coming our way. Uh, we we didn't necessarily anticipate that when we when we started this. You know, we, we we named it the Turn Company. We wanted to focus on Turn. And the more you know, clients, ownership groups, uh, management companies, regional managers that we that we started talking with about you know, the turn company and, and what we wanted to do, uh, that was something that just kept coming up over and over. And we're like, you know, we're, if we're doing it for turn, why not do it, you know, for, for any other project out there? And so we, we started that uh, kind of parallel to uh, focusing on the turns. And we started putting proposals out and talking to, uh, in a lot of cases, the same vendors we're working with for turn. Um, but in other cases, if it's an electrician, we just we're able to kind of laser focus on that bidding process and we can spend time reaching out to vendors all over the country. Uh, in a lot of cases, they'll travel between states, even if it's for an electrical, you know, a lighting project. If we find a cheaper vendor in Texas and we can, you know, find in, uh, you know, Washington state, then, um, yeah, we'll we'll work out the gotcha. pricing with them and have them come up there. Yeah, so uh, they they do kind of run hand in hand, and and like I said, we weren't anticipating that. That's that's going to be that's been a big part of, of what we're doing year round. Gotcha, gotcha. All right, so I want to transition and, and and move over and start talking to Lincoln a little bit more about the technology and the software side of things, and and how how that can help our audience members. Lincoln, Easy Turn, uh, you, you know, the first I think. I think I first met you guys two, maybe three years ago. And kind of the first objective at that point was really just replacing the the turn board. And, you know, you guys have done a great job of that. And it's, it, it's expanded into other things. I'm, I'm looking forward to, to you talking about that. But really just for, you know, our audience members that may not be accustomed to your story or know about your story, Tell us a little bit how you and, and your other co-founder, uh, Chase, who was one of your cleaning vendors when you were on that 6,700-bed property at, in Lexington. Talk to us a little bit about you know how Easy Turn came to be. Yeah, so um, like I mentioned, uh, that UK project is really um, is really kind of where it kept hitting me. And, and, and really, I had another uh, person I worked there with named Corey, and we just sat down and we just kept thinking there has to be an easier way to do this. When you scale things, that can happen. Uh, but we've learned too that, of course, we're not just built for larger projects like that. But, but as a whole, the process is is very, is very Stone Age. I mean, when you look at it, this is the same way, like we always mention, same way it's been done. Even if you happen to bring in Excel sheets or Google sheets and bring some sort of uh, real time aspect to it, 
um, it's still done the same way. Um, I, I, I've told people stories before about having to have my people run back into the office and take a picture of the turn board and, and, and send it to me so I can see what's going on. And, and all those things should have been just the most clear signs that we need technology in this area. But when we were there, um, I had different ideas running through my mind on how to streamline it. I'll tell you one of my original thoughts. We used to have these print offs and it would, you'd have to go through and sign trash out would have to be signed off on each door. Um, you know, paint would have to be signed off each door and carpet, you know, uh, cleaning in the carpet. Right. And then those would fall. I wouldn't find them. So I would leave them on the door. You'd sign in to say you've been there and you'd move on to the next one. And at the end I could go through and collect those and know if it had the final inspection. That was one way I did it at one of my properties. And obviously, again, we thought these papers fall down. People accidentally throw them away. We don't have any records. And then even that next year, I'm not going to keep. And they have post-it notes that are attached to them. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> or someone tore off the corner to put, you know, spit gum out. Right. So, and at the end, we're not going to have this big, you know, th- I always say the overworked clipboard. Cause I think anyone in student housing knows what that looks like in their mind an overworked clipboard. And I'm not going to have this giant clipboard with all these papers jammed on it and going through and trying to read all the notes that everybody left. Um, so I thought there had to be a way to get there. And then, as you mentioned, uh, I met Chase. He was frustrated for these that don't know. Chase was uh, in the NFL, came out, started a company um, in, you know, kind of manning in general and then got into cleaning and he was younger and more innovative. And he just thought, this is so dumb. We're going to these properties, not just UK, but other properties. They're giving us a piece of paper every day. And I'm like tearing it in half to give this half to this guy, this half to this guy. And then, you know, it, it's, it's, you know, he found it very ridiculous that we were doing that in 20. 16 or 15, whatever it was when he started doing that. But um, we just saw it as an opportunity and and uh, got down and, and whiteboarded up uh, what we thought it should be. And much like the term company, we started off with the three essentials of paint, clean, and carpet. And, you know, that's where we were for our very first product. And so I quit uh, my job and, and, and really went all in and focused on easy turn and and uh, we got some developers and built our phase one. And that's about when I met you, Wes. And that was our phase one. And since then, we've just been pouring in, honestly, and I can't do it without our customers, but feedback from our customers and our own, and our own development team have really just been, you know, just, you know, taking the burrs off, if you will. And and now we have this Corvette where in the beginning, it was definitely a hoopty going in the right direction, but very slowly and falling <laughs> apart sometimes. And now we have this Corvette and, and it's awesome. And, and and I guess just like Corvette, uh, it's getting they're getting better every you know every year. So our product keeps getting better. And we really always said we weren't trying to replace uh, other softwares. We really wanted to just own Turn. But what we learned through that was, from my background, I kept searching in and saying, what other features do we need other than just Turn? And as both of you know, Turn is very dependent on inspections. So that was the first thing we tackled. We built an inspection tool that helps prepare for Turn. As all you all know, the furniture inspection is one of the most crucial and critical things that you can do every year for turn. Even if you bring in your best hot shots on move out day and the best people in turn and they get down there, if they don't have the supplies or the furniture they need, they're in trouble. And you can try to go bombard HD Supply or, or Granger or anybody else, but if you don't have the furniture from, from your vendors, then you're in big trouble. So we really wanted to tackle that first. And then the next line we really wanted to cross over was communication between your team and the vendors. As you all know, office individuals end up being turn people during turn, right? They're putting on their rubber gloves and and holding things like this sometimes. <laughs> um, but they are going into these rooms and they're they're trashing out units and you know raking really really bad rooms. We have to rake trash and and they're you know they're kind of kicking into that mode right during turn. And so you're kind of having office cohesiveness in that sense. But then at the same time, you have these vendors come on. And it seemed like before, only the facilities guys and maybe the PM really were the ones who really talked to the vendors much. Um, it was like a, like a Brady Bunch, like two different families, you know, the vendors and then the in-house. And really, we wanted to kind of break that down as far as not only talking to the lead painter, but having a way to communicate with his lead guy who's really going to be the one on site, right? We know that the the head of the paint company sometimes isn't there and his subs are there. So we added, you know, through having the app, which is what actually shows you, we call it our, their digital list. Instead of picking up a physical list, they have a digital list. If you want to change units, you know, you can do that, but they're going to pull up their app. And of course, the beauty of this is when they go and hit start in a unit, 
you from your desk can see where everyone's at on your site. And that's really yeah, been the so cool. biggest thing is the real time aspect of really tracking all your people. It captures how long they're in there. And, and I, I'm, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you said that because, you know, as, as we've taught, uh, you know, over the past couple of years, I think we were all like all of us have been doing the same thing with, you know, the, the sheets of paper taped to the wall or an Excel sheet you know, with a big monitor and, and whatever the, the you know, wh- wherever the war room is set up, <laughs> you know, at a, at a property, I, I see that over and over again. And, you know, I don't think any of us that were the, the operators out there, right. Really had the time. Cause again, we're doing this one time a year and it was like, you know, are we going to pour a bunch of money into developing something and, you know, we would push on two, three property management companies that were out there. Uh, you know, so we kind of put it in their court, and they would say, "Well, hey, we've already got a make ready board. You know, can we can we use this?" And it's like, no, <laughs> we we can't. Like that's worthless to us because there's what we really needed was project management software in, in a lot of ways, and so. That's what I love about what you just described because it, it goes so far beyond just putting checks in boxes and tying that somehow electronically to work orders. So, yeah. I, so uh, let's go through some of the functionality. And, and I, I, I want to talk or start, I guess, with if I'm a property manager and I'm looking you know, to, to get away from the Excel sheets or the the dry erase board or whatever, and go to easy turn. What is that setup like? Is it something that I just, does it integrate with the property management software or, you know, do I have to upload an Excel sheet? That's a great question. So like I said, how, how far our software has come, um, we did a complete rebuild last year to really give us full functionality. And with that, we did uh, we are now an open API, which is kind of what everyone is doing now, which just allows them to integrate with multiple systems. And again, like we mentioned, we never try to take over the whole thing. So we knew we had to be able to be integrated. So there's two different ways. Our traditional way is we literally take like a rent roll from the property and we'll build out what I like to call the infrastructure or the skeleton of that uh, property in the system and it will stay there, right? So it knows um, your buildings, your units, your unit types, you know, how many beds every unit has, it knows all that. And then it's already in your profile. And so whenever you schedule it already, it already knows what you have. But we do have integrations where you can do that and pull that information over. And so setup wise, that was relatively quick. We always say we don't recommend it, but we've had people call us in uh, <clears throat> mid, mid-July, mid early July to get set up for an August 1st turn. And so it can be set up like that. But um, like Matt mentioned earlier, we'd love to get there and, and meet the team. And, you know, I really take pride in having a, a good personal relationship with the property managers that are, uh, that are you know, under me and using our product to really have the back and forth and, and let them know that I'm there for them and make sure they're completely comfortable with our product um, before turn actually starts. So, yeah, that's the first step. We bring that on. Then, like I said, I mentioned our system will track not only your staff members or not only outside contractors, but also your staff members. So even your crew trashing out, um, you really can track all that. And it really is beneficial, obviously, since, you know, trash out and maintenance is literally a step in turn. So once that gets done, you know, then you can start going through the rest of the vendor. So it really is something that doesn't only track them or yourself, but it tracks all of it. And so we push that through the rest of our system, even with our messaging that we have. I give everyone the example, and I always say I don't give examples unless I've experienced it, um, where I'll get picture, I'll get text a picture of a broken window a broken window from one of my guys and I'll be busy and I'll just keep going and I'll call them back and say, you know, where was this broken window from? And they're like, ah, I think like the third floor, <laughs> uh, you know, cause for them it's been an hour or two, you know, and, and if they don't give me that information, I'm like, then I'm going around trying to match my phone with these windows and do detective work. If I know where that car is at, I think this seems like a third floor angle um, to try to figure this stuff out. But, you know, we really create that open communication where it's not a combination of let me go through my texts, my emails. And, you know, obviously if it's a phone call, it's just done for. Um, so we really try to now some of our new features, we have a, a messaging system that you can do individual messages or group messages. So if you have three cleaners, you can, t- you know, you can message all three and say someone left a mop bucket in this breezeway. Right. And then all three will be able to see that. So we really want to up the communication, the clarity, the transparency, all for better efficiency, of course. Right. But 
like Matt also mentioned, when you get done with a turn, I give this example, but they do. They they roll up their turn board, put it in the back of the closet. Never you know, look at it they, again. They move on above all their old Excel sheets they had written out. All those pieces of paper are torn up because once they're done, they do that happy tear and throw it yeah. down. And they have moving day's done. Do we still need this? No, throw it away. So, you know, we keep data and analytics and, and we keep things like we track how many go-backs vendors have. We give actual scores and ratings to vendors uh, for you to make ah, future cool. decisions. So it kind of builds a profile for them. And yeah, so, I mean, obviously we want to carry over the knowledge. I also give this example about having multiple kids and how you keep forgetting what your last kid, you know, how old is a kid supposed to start walking or, or when do they start eating solid foods? Like you forget every time you have a kid, the same way you forget every time a turn happens. Um, <laughs> and then you end up having the same mistakes or like, that's why we couldn't do this way or, you know, or that's why we don't like this vendor. So there's just different things that happen and we just really want to help people. And it's, we want to obsess over it and become a specialist like like the churn company wants to do. We want to become a specialist. This is the day and age of specialists versus having to be a renaissance man of all. We'll put in that focus. We'll think about it year round. And and the cool thing about, you know, and Matt will discover this too if he hasn't already, but doing turns all around the country, I get everyone's ideas. They all tell me how they run their turns. I always say if I wasn't a turn expert in the beginning, I, I am now just via hearing yeah. how the entire country does turns multiple companies do turns. I get to know all the tricks um, of the trade. So it's been a really fascinating uh, journey as far as that goes. So you mentioned earlier that you you kind of started things with the, with an inspection app, you know, kind of thing. Right. And I'm just wondering, are there any other applications that, that managers can use easy turn for other than, you know, I'm thinking, for example, uh, you know, the, the CAs uh, we would typically assign them a, a building to do, you know, a monthly light audit, right? And we would set up a Google Sheet and that way everything kind of, you know, would sync up into the cloud. But just wondering if if this has the capability of, of doing that type of stuff as well. Yeah, so our system can definitely handle that. Our inspection part now is primarily for things like quarterlies and whatnot, but we can definitely do things like light logs. And even as you said that, I remember working for, I guess all my companies maybe do this in some capacity, I would literally do my light log, I'd scan it, I'd email it in, it would go to my regionals box and he'd have a scanned, a maintenance guy scanned version of of all this information. And really getting that data there and getting it collected properly is obviously, we do light logs for a reason so we can track it. But, you know, you wonder how many of those things really get opened up and read, you know, when it happens like that. So again, to the data portion, we really want to be able to show to make sure, of course, for insurance purposes or something goes wrong, uh, light logs are huge. People never know why they're doing light logs or life safety checks, but that's all can be, you know, to, to help you out in case something happens on your site. So it's important data that some people pencil whip, I've heard is the term uh, civilian world. We call it gun decking in the military, but they just go through and <laughs> fill it out and move on with our system where it can track when you're actually doing work. You know, we can ensure that those things are happening. So Absolutely. Gotcha. Well, guys, I always save the most important questions for last. And, uh, you know, <laughs> um, if, uh, if I wasn't already sold on what you guys are, are doing, I, I, I think I am now. But uh, talk about cost. Matt, we'll, we'll start with you. Yeah, this is the most uh, critical question always, isn't it? Um, of course. You know, our, our yeah, our, our goal with with every turn is that we want to be cost neutral and that uh, any any fees that that do get paid to us are offset by savings and in, in other areas of the budget. And I'll I'll give you a couple of examples. Uh, but we do charge a five thousand dollar management fee that gets us engaged with the community immediately and for the next twelve months. Uh, that that locks us in for the next year. Uh, there are no other fees or charges than that. You know that that's it. That's what gets us you know in the door. It gets us started working on everybody's turn. Uh, from the time that, that, you know, we get the contract signed and the move out and or between contract being signed and the move out date, we work with the on-site teams continually. Uh, we do multiple calls, multiple site visits. Uh, we do vendor testing. We test out the paint, make sure that paint is matching and blending. Uh, we And uh, we provide a turn plan uh, prior to the move out date. Uh, so that everybody involved is on the same page. And then on the first day of turn, that's when we collect 50% of the estimated contract total. And, uh, you know, those those are the numbers, the number of turn areas that we're anticipating. 
the rates we've worked out uh, with the community. And we, you know, put that together, come up with an estimated total. Um, and then when turn is finished, we only build the community back for the exact number of beds and common areas uh, that were turned, you know, during the period, along with any, um, uh, any approved change orders. Uh, so while we can't, we can't always bring everybody's turn expenses down, our real impact is on the savings uh, that we can provide as far as like turn travel, uh, temp labor, payroll overtime, you know, so your teams aren't cleaning toilets at midnight, you know, anymore. And they are focused on moving day and they're focused on leasing and they're focused on a uh, rent collection. And, and of course, you know, the value of the peace of mind and uh, peace of mind and not having to worry that your turn's going to fail or that you're going to blow your budget. Gotcha. Well, Lincoln, how about uh, the pricing structure for, for easy turn? Is that a, is it a per bed cost? Is it a per property? How does that work? So, yeah. So, um, you know, like Matt said, I wouldn't be a business owner if I didn't say that we thought, you know, that we know that our product um, has the ability, you know, we always say that there's a possibility to pay for itself, obviously, you know, that's always our goal, right? We don't want to be an added expense. We really want to help people. So uh, also part of our platform is invoicing and avoiding being double billed uh, and having a cleaner process through that. And of course, our product keeps you from going to your units as much time um, and really just speeds up the whole process. So we used to be a per bed price, but now we actually do a uh, dollar per front unit um, a month on a year contract. With our upgrades, we now have products that are used year round that can help you year round between the inspection side. Um, we also have a task manager that we've built into our system that's really interesting that you can actually task out your employees. If you have a weekend crew that's working and you want to leave them 10 things to do over the weekend, you can actually assign it through through easy turn and then actually see when they start and finish their weekend work. So um, a really unique task manager uh, for that as well. But for multi-year deals, we have different specials and things we can run on it. But our base price is a dollar uh, a front door a year. And we do not, we are unique. And, and I always say I do this because I couldn't stand it as a customer sometimes, but um, we don't have all these extra modulars and stuff that you can add on and add on. That's a price for our full product through and through um, unlimited users within that site. And um, we also don't have a setup fee. We do our training via Zoom or um, we can work out something else if, if they don't yeah. want it via Zoom, but um, we don't do any other setup costs. So that's our, that's our deal. Dollar front door, a unit, you know, a month for a year contract. And it's, uh, it's worked out nicely. And of course it helps to scale perfectly for your, for your community size. Yeah, no, that's, that's very reasonable. And I, I got to imagine, I mean, I've seen some of these other, you know, products that, that work with vendors where some of that cost is, is passed along to the, to the vendor, you know, as part of um, kind of their setup on the community. So maybe that's a way, you know, to, to recoup it. If somebody's wanting to bring you guys on right now and their budget's already baked, you know, that's something that could probably be passed on to, to vendors and recoup some of that. So eh, who, who's kidding? The vendors are just going to charge it back in their invoice. So. <laughs> 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 but anyway, um, well, guys, thanks so much. Uh, again, uh, what you guys are doing, I think, is uh, is very innovative. I think it's something that uh, you know we've all got to pay attention to, no matter even if it's the the old guys like me that you know love to <laughs> to to do it the old fashioned way and and um, you know really get in and. and get your elbows and, and knuckles dirty during the <laughs> during the process of turn. Um, I think what you guys are doing is just taking it to a whole nother level. And, and the main thing, being able to, to have the data to analyze it after the turn and be able to say, okay, how did we really do? And, and comparing that year over year, I think it's a big thing. You know, even when folks go to, to, to buy another property, you know, being able to, have that uh, that information on what it's really costing you during turn so that when you're underwriting another project you know maybe they're not using the turn company or easy turn and you can see okay what is this what has this really been saving me and and i think just from a couple of people that you know are customers certainly of easy turn i haven't ran into to any from the turn company but i know it's only a matter of time 
you know, they've said, hey, look, look at how much money I've saved, you know, by, by using easy turn and being able to, to look at this. So, yeah, that that's a key thing. And I appreciate you guys spending the time with us. Before we go, I want to make sure that you guys pull your website so that people can get more information. Matt, what's the, is it turncompany.com? Yeah, theturncompany.com. Uh, you can go there and click on our contact uh, link, or you can email us at info at theturncompany.com, and we'll get right back to you. And I've, I've got to imagine if there's an Instagram page, that's going to be a, a critical thing to see come August. Is there is there an Instagram page for The Turn Company yet? Not, not yet, but uh, we have been kicking that around with our social media uh, gurus. Uh, in marketing. So yeah, we're, that will be a thing. It's going to be fun. <laughs> <laughs> and Lincoln, uh, easyturn.net, is that correct? Uh, correct. Easyturn.net. And you can get all our contact information on there. And uh, yeah, we have everything right there on the page and just made a little marketing video that'll be on there as well too. So y'all can come check that out on the website. Fantastic. Well guys, thanks so much. And we'll talk to you soon. Absolutely. Thanks right. for having us, Wes.